There are many ways you can enhance the appearance of your form. I mean, don't leave it plain and simple like I do, unless of course that works for you. But let me show you a few things. You can add a title up at the top part of your form, something that says what it is. This is our book sales here. And then over to the right, maybe add a logo. Down at the bottom here, for these six fields, we could go ahead and uh, rope them off or put a rectangle around it to highlight it or to emphasize these six fields that when somebody opens the form, this is the uh, point of interest. So to get started, let me go ahead and right click in a blank area, go to the design view. Now when it comes to moving our fields around, as you recall in an earlier training video, we would click and drag. If we needed to move a group of fields, we would select all of them, you know, by holding down the shift key and clicking or marking it by clicking and dragging, starting in a blank area, and then stretching the line or the marquee of the uh, rectangle, and whatever it surrounds when I let go, it selects it. Now that's nice if I just need to do it one time, but if I need to go ahead and move these as a group quite a few times as I'm redesigning it, the operative word being group, we can go ahead and group this. That way when I click and drag, one of them, all of them will follow. So to group it, go ahead and select all of them first, and then after that, come up here, click on the Arrange tab, go to the Sizing and Ordering group, click on the Size and Space drop down arrow, and go down to Group. That's it. Click off in a blank area. Whatever I click on, just one, and I drag it, all the others will follow. Okay, let me go ahead and undo it. And then to unapply the group or to ungroup it, go back to where we came from, size and space to ungroup. Click off, click and drag one, it's ungrouped so the others don't follow. Let me go ahead and hit undo. Okay, let's go ahead and draw a rectangle around these fields down at the bottom here so we can have it offset against the uh, rest of the fields. You know, it's the point of interest. So to do that, come up here on the Design tab, go to the Controls group, click on the More button, and there it is, Rectangle. Click on the Control, and as I move my mouse over the grid, you can see it's got a plus sign, and then the uh, shape of a rectangle. I'm going to go ahead and start in the upper left-hand corner in a blank area, and then click and drag to surround those six boxes or fields, let go. And if I can't see the bottom border of the rectangle, I can hover over the bottom part of the grid until my pointer turns into black arrows pointing up and down, then click and drag. And there we go, we can see it. And then if I need to resize it, hover over any one of the resizing handles there until your pointer turns into black arrows pointing in opposite directions, then you can click and drag to resize it. And if you want to move it, then hover over the border of it, not a resizing handle, but until you see four way arrows there, then you can go ahead and click and drag to move it over. But if you're like me when it comes to clicking and dragging with the mouse, I kind of overshoot it, and it's hard to get it just incrementally so. So you can use the arrow keys and it's quite the jump with the arrow keys, but if you hold down the control key and use the arrow keys, it's more minute, okay, the movements. And then I can click off, and then I'm like, okay, that looks nice, but I want to format it, maybe make the color of the line red, and also give it a special effect, which you can do by when you select it. And by the way, if you can't select it because, you know, you're clicking on it and you can't quite get the line there, well, as we learned in an earlier training video, you can select the objects over in the uh, form section here by bringing up the property sheet here. Again, on the design tab to property sheet. And here's the selection list. Click on the drop down arrow and I'll scroll up. Whatever I select here, we'll select it over here in the grid. Okay, so that could be helpful. After I have it selected here, then I can go ahead and right click on it and get some ooh, special effects. Fancy. Come down here and let's do, uh, looks like a shadow. Select it. And then before we go ahead and take a look at it, let's change the color. With it still selected, I'm going to come up here on the Format tab to the Control Formatting group. Click on the Shape Outline drop-down arrow, and like I said, red. Select it. Click off, and well, it certainly does stand out. Didn't say it would look pretty, but nonetheless, you get the point. It offsets it. I'm sure you'll choose something that looks uh, more apropos. Okay, next, let's go ahead and create a label or a title for our form here. And there's a couple ways you can do it. I'm going to come up here, click on the Design tab one way is to come on the Design tab over to the Header and Footer group and click on the title. When you do that, it does a couple of things. First of all, it adds the form header section and then a label down below. And the name, the default name of the label is, uh, well, the name of the form. You can do it that way, or I'm going to go ahead and uh, click off in a blank area. I could hit the Undo button, but to get rid of this uh, title, to select it, hit the Delete key. Well, actually, let me go ahead and hit undo a couple of times to show you how you can bring up that form header section if you didn't click on title but you wanted that form header section to create your label for your form within all you have to do is go ahead and right click on the detail bar and there it is form header and footer click on it brings up the form header and it's quite the, the small amount of space in there I can go ahead and open it up one of two ways either hover over the top part of the uh, detail bar there till you get black arrows pointing up and down click and drag or 
Double click on the form header bar really fast to bring up its corresponding property sheet. And then over where it says height, I can click in there and delete the height and change it to 2. Hit enter. Well, it opens up. We'll fix that in just a minute. I mean, I don't need that much space, but for now we're okay. Let's close out of here and let's add our label. By coming up here, design tab to the controls group, click on the label button, come down here and you can see that I've got the plus sign with the uh, icon there for the label. I can either go ahead and click to add it and just start typing or let me hit the escape key so it doesn't uh, save that or I can click on it and then click and drag to get the size that I would like my label to be. And then I can go ahead and just start typing. Now I want you to know that when you're typing you're in edit mode and you can't apply any formatting. For example if I come up here on the format tab you can see I don't get any formatting options. Not until I hit enter and I'm out of the edit mode of the text that is then it'll allow me to go ahead and format uh, the text within the label box. So then I can go ahead and say well the size is kind of small let's do 20 and then maybe instead of Corbell we'll go ahead and type in Algerian, uh, hit enter. Oh, that's kind of fancy. When I'm finished, if I want to go ahead and uh, resize the uh, box to uh, conform or fit to the uh, contents they're in, you know, the title there, book sales, all I have to do is hover over the right middle handle and double click really fast and it does a best fit. Okay, next let's go ahead and insert an image. And we learned how to do this in an earlier training video by coming up here, clicking on the design tab. And there's one of two ways you can do it. You can either click on the more button and click on the image to insert it. But as we learned, when I do it that way, the image doesn't seem to be or appear clear. It's kind of fuzzy. But I can do it the other way, just right next to it, clicking on this image button, which isn't available when I have something else selected. So I need to click off, then click on the drop down arrow, go ahead and click browse. And the image is in my exercises folder. And the reason why it's not showing it is because it's looking for a particular file type or types. Click on the drop down arrow and say we want to see all file types, select it. There it is, books, double click on it. And then when I hover over the grid, you can see a little plus sign in the image of, uh, well, an image. Go ahead and click where you want to dump it, and there we go. Of course, I don't like the size of it, so I want to make it a little bit smaller by hovering over the lower right-hand corner till my pointer turns into arrows pointing in opposite directions. Click and drag it in. And if you get an image that doesn't quite fit within the box after you resize it, as you recall in an earlier training video, let me double click to pull up the property sheet for the corresponding image. You can come over here to the size mode. By default here, it's set to zoom. You can choose stretch to stretch to fit the size of the box that you have, which I don't like it when it's stretched. Or you can clip it, meaning that it keeps its original size and what it can't fit into the box, it, well, clips it. So I'm going to go back to zoom because that looks good. Close out. Hover over the middle of the image till you see the four-way arrow. Click and drag it so we can move the image. And then I'm going to hover over the uh, top part of the detail bar till my pointer turns into those black arrows pointing up and down so I can click and drag that up to pull the detail section up just right underneath the uh, title and the image here. As a side note, if there comes a time that you're working in the form header section here and you don't want it visible while you're making changes to it, well first of all let me go ahead and click on the form view so you can see it. Wow that looks good. Oh by the way we've got an outline here I don't want to see that so I'll go ahead and right click and go back to the design view. I've got it selected, come up here, click on the Format tab, click on the Shape Outline, and let's set it to Transparent. So when I click off, I mean you can see it here, but that's just the box that it's containing it in. And I go back to right click to Form View, it's transparent, you can't see it. So when I right click and I go back to the Design View, and, and as I was saying, if I'm working on the Form Header section and I don't want it viewable to the front end user yet until I completed it, just go ahead and double click on the uh, Form Header bar to bring up its corresponding property sheet. You can see visible is set to yes, and I'm on the all tab. If I was on the format tab, it would be up at the top. So visible is yes, double click it to no. When I right click, go to the form view, it's not displayed. Until I finish my work, then I can go ahead and display it, okay? Right click, back to, well, let me right click in a blank area, back to design view, and then double click it to say yes, I want it visible. And then finally, we have what's called conditional formatting. I'll go over it a little bit more in detail in a later training video, but to introduce it to you here, and as part of our enhancing appearance with our forms, let me close out of the property sheet. I want to take a value field, like the total sold, and let's say that I want to be able to display or show all those uh, books that we sold between, let's say, 10 to 15 copies. In other words, I'm giving it a range here. And based upon that condition or criteria, between 10 and 15, let's format it like red. In any case, I have it selected. Come up here, click on the Format tab, go to the Control Formatting group, then click on Conditional Formatting. It brings it open. We want to create a new rule. 
and then down below it says, okay, if the field value is between 10 and 15, then I want you to go ahead and underline, and you can see the preview over here, and give it a fancy color, maybe something soft, not too uh, harsh. Click OK, click OK. Let's take it for a test drive. Right click the tab, go to the form view, and as the front end user is whipping through the records here, see if something stands out. Oop, there it is. The total sold for this customer is between 10 and 15. Maybe that's our marketing. It's like, hey, if they bought some books but they didn't buy enough, let's go ahead and give them a discount. In any case, let me go ahead and right click and go back to the design view. If you want to remove it from this field, then just go back to where we came from, the format tab, to conditional formatting, click on it, and then go ahead and select it and delete it. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.